prevalence of competition in all aspects of our society has ingrained this ongoing subconscious narrative that we have to rank ourselves externally, we have to have these awards, we have to have these titles, we have to have X, Y, and Z experiences in order to be valid, and that's just not the case. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to go through, I'm going to give you five tips on how to manifest the art or the performance opportunity, whether it's in public or just in private, and you want to have a good freestyle for one fucking time in your life, and <laughs> <laughs> you want to travel a country like me, I got the formula for you. So, here we go. <laughs> All right, five steps. Here we go. Step one, get an education to pay your dues. You think this is obvious, but apparently it's not. So I'm going to do this. <laughs> wow. Respect your elders. Okay, if there's someone who's a veteran in your field, respect them. Do not act entitled. Stay humble. These are things I have to say as a producer. <laughs> pay for classes. And if you don't have the money to pay for classes, there are other ways of supporting your art field and also other ways you can get an education, including the wonderful world of YouTube, the wonderful world of Instagram. Don't just ad-lib. There is information in the world that exists for you. And lastly, volunteer your time to a local production. Crew members are always needed. This is very important. Do not skip this step. Do not. Alright, next thing. Success is an awful barometer. What I mean by that is that success is something that is defined by external factors, like I mentioned, the boards and things and so forth. Um, and what is better is satisfaction. What does that mean? So, if you got to create a piece of art, no one else in the world ever has to see it, but what truly satisfies you, even if it's ugly, even if there's not a handspring in it, even if you can't do a backswing, even if you can't do some shoulder rolls, what brings you satisfaction? What little thing makes you feel that gooeyness inside? Keep that in mind always. So, if you struggle to answer this question, I highly recommend therapy. <laughs> It's my saving grace. It is the reason I can make art. And honestly, it's just, if you can't ask, like, figure out inside yourself what satisfies you, and you only care about, like, oh, well, I would just be happier if I had one medal, you are never going to be happy. I tried that. <laughs> so, if what truly satisfies you seems impossibly difficult and far away, know that you have everything inside of you already. You can achieve what you want. And I know that that's such a, like, you can do anything. <laughs> but, like, it truly is a powerful thing that you have to remind yourself every day. You are not inadequate. You have everything that you need. All right, this is where the stuff gets a little bit more juicy. So, you know, especially as pole dancers with all of our fellow sex workers, we always hear, oh, yeah, get, get that hustle girl, like, whatever. Um, but that also leads to burnout very quickly. So I've been using this method of alignment. So, what does that mean? This is going to sound like some hippie shit for a second. But just stay with me because there are some useful activities here. So, your mind has to arrive at your destination before your life does. What this means is if you keep, if you are in a public space, for example, and I was to walk up to you and go, man, I just wish I could be a burlesque dancer one day. Or, I could show up and say, Hi, I'm Marina Mars, my burlesque dancer. This is the way I chose to dress today. I have already arrived at my destination, therefore everything else is... The opportunities naturally are going to come to you a little bit more quickly when it comes to performance and for your own personal freestyling. You won't have that mental barrier there. So, morning cup of joke. I do this every morning. I have a list of favorite words that resonate with me or things I'm struggling with or insecurities I might have, and I flip them on their head. So, for example, my tagline is, I'm Aphrodite's Marvelous Mistress. Everything I do is a love letter to life, a love letter to my, my community, and a love letter to just humanity as a whole, even though I'm emo and I hate certain things about life, like I love humanity, right? So I, what I do is, if, I have a, if I'm at Starbucks or I'm somewhere and I have like a disposable cup, 
I'll write whatever word I need to keep in mind to like get me through the day, whatever my struggle is. If you're at home and you're using like a reusable cup, I have little square like posters that like I just steal from the bar, you know those paper ones that normally you just kind of peel apart and you just throw them in the bar and better. You take those home, you just like write a little sharpie on them, a little piece of cardboard, anything. And every time you take a sip and you put it down, the word's there. So even if you're not mentally every single time being like, I'm worthy and deserving of love. I'm worthy and deserving of love. Mm -hmm. It's not that, it's just like subconsciously you're seeing this and you're surrounding yourself with it and therefore, just like if I say yellow beetle, you're gonna all of a sudden see 12 yellow beetles in the next day. <laughs> same, same exact concept. Second one, write it, read it, tuck it, achieve it. <laughs> it's similar, but it's a little bit more long term than just your cup of coffee. So, for example, I do this for large things in my life. I'm trying to move to San Francisco, get into the tech industry. I'm trying to manifest a brand new life for me and like level up my performance. So steps in between. I need to network a little bit more and meet the right people to get the jobs that I want. So I write it down specifically, like a journal entry. You never have to read it again necessarily. Tuck it in your pocket. That, and, and every time you grab the change in your pocket or you're grabbing your phone and it falls out, oh, wait, I have goals. <laughs> like I'm just not an aimless person just trying to like not die today, right? Like, oh, well, that's good enough. I mean, that is a good thing alone, but if you're striving to achieve a little bit more than not dying, having that physical representation with you throughout the day, it's shocking how of all of the therapies I've been through, these two things have turned me into a professional.
the end of the day, we're all people. We're not just places to pick pockets from. But ironically, by just accepting that, they're going to throw your money, their money at you. <laughs> at the end of the day, though, it's not about money. So my field, and my other life, my mobile life, I'm a mathematician. I could be making a hell of a load of money, right? But going back to satisfaction, the best way to find like a hobby or um, a thing that you want to do, especially if you want to perform, you want to satisfy people, even on your lowest days. If you're having one of those days where you're performing and you're just like, man, I had a really crappy day, like, I'm not really feeling this, but then you remember your audience and you remember that you love these people and you just want to make the world a better place and you just want to inspire people to just live their lives, all of a sudden, your little sim stats go all the way up and you're happy and you're excited and you're ready to get back on stage. The moment you keep that in, you forget about that, it's game over. Be extraordinarily flexible. So Einstein took a thousand attempts to make a label. So if I send a thousand emails out and I get a bunch of rejections, that's to be expected because not everyone is going to be on that same level or looking for what you want. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not worthy or you're not a good artist. It just means it's not the right fit and that's fine. So you will fail. You will face rejection. Learn and grow. You will have your heart broken. Feel the pain. Use it as a fertilizer. Your life will immediately fall apart many times in life, and it'll do it all the time, and you'll have to reroute, and this is to ironically be expected. So don't let this harden you. Don't let this feel like it is the end. It's more of a question that you really need to look internally. Um, it's, just, it's just part of the process. Like, making art, making shows, it's, you're naturally going to be going through all of your emotions, which is why I recommend therapy in the beginning of this. <laughs> if you don't have a strong mind and a strong heart, it might be difficult to get through this. But I say these things because, again, facing getting those rejection emails in festivals or you, know, you didn't win your medal or you couldn't even get to the stage. I had to drop out of the competition this weekend because my life falls under category C here. <laughs> so, uh, it's not the end of the road. I mean, there's still, what that does is it makes space for other opportunities. For example, now I'm performing the Burlesque Hall of Fame in the next couple of weekends, and now I have the time and the mental and the emotional energy to get there. So when life falls apart and you have to quit some shit, other things, the things that are meant to be, for lack of better phrasing, will fall into place. Again, as long as you keep up that positivity, you're not just going to go on Facebook and be like, this stupid ass festival, they didn't make sense of me, I had to drop out of this stupid competition, don't matter, fuck this shit. That's the kind of stuff that's just going to, if you want that negative page, it's going to come back. So be flexible. And turn your message into your message. That's what my meditation and guru tells me all the time. And I come in and I cry. And she's like, no, this is good. This is part of your message. Own it. And that's why I'm here right now. So, here's specifically for performing professionally, and this is where it might actually uh, get kind of bitchy, but I'm cool with it. <laughs> so, you can't quote a twinkle, but you sure can describe it. So, what does that mean? So, you have to have the gusto to show people what you are and what you are bringing to the table. So, you have to get comfortable talking about yourself in as many mediums as possible. Uh, in the Midwest, that's hard. Uh, bragging or talking about yourself in a positive way tends to make people feel, I don't know, personally attacked for some reason, and it's weird, and it's something that I had to shed in order to be able to be like, actually, yes, these are all the things that I do, that long list of things. I'm not going to not say them just because that's not who I am, because those are the things that I get booked for. Um, and you won't get booked for them if you don't put it out there. If you don't say, I'm a burlesque dancer, I'm a model, I do these things, no one's going to know that your services are available to be booked. So, invest in learning communication skills because this will, you will be your number one advocate. No one is ever going to randomly come across your YouTube page and discover you <laughs> and then you'll automatically just be like, live in the dream. I tried it! I tried it all! It doesn't do anything. Although I'm really popular in India with all of the men over 
number 47. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to you guys. <laughs> so seriously, I've taken a lot of copy classes, like social media marketing classes, not even like at universities and shit, like things don't have to be accredited to be of value. There's a lot of online courses I've taken. Uh, B-School by Marie Forleo and her, she has a program called Copy Cure. That's what helps me be the writer that I am today, which is why I have uh, like the thing that I put a lot of my art into. Okay, if you want to be viewed as a professional, present yourself as one. That's where we're going to get a little spicy. So, again, the negative shit, don't put it online. If you're having a bad day, talk to a therapist about it. Talk to your, you know, family, make yourself some tea. Don't put that shit on the internet unless it is part of your art and, it is, and you thought it through and you know that it is relevant to the message that you are consistently selling. So, being an artist is a valu valuable and valid job just like anything else. Don't degrade yourself or your art form and your peers by acting in ways that contradict what you're trying to sell. Exactly what I said, but also the way I dress today. I'm not going to come in here and not even have brush my teeth, you know, just I just walk in and I don't care because I'm a artist. <laughs> so I'm going to smell a little weird. And no, I'm still a professional. I'm still here trying to give you guys tools and move forward, right? So present yourself as such. Make damn website. <laughs> they put him up there. <laughs> oh. It's really easy to stop. <laughs> I know, I know now. But okay, here's the thing. This is really, this is key. Wix and Squarespace, 150 a year. All you have to do is do what? Like, depending on the gig pay, one to three gigs, whatever, to like pay for this. Um, and it is invaluable. So I just did a cross country tour. And I got booked. I was shocked. Like the, I got booked in San Francisco. My wildest dreams got to perform in the best shows that I've ever seen in the country. I got to like close out and headline these shows. And why was that? Oh, because my email signature says Marina Mars, traveling showgirl, Las Vegas, Nevada. Phone number www.marinamarsmotherfucking.com So, it answers all the questions that they might already have, whereas if you're just like, yeah, I'd like to do this shit, XO, Mar Marina, like, that's not going to get you booked. Websites that make you look professional, as well as <laughs> business cards. For example, the other day, <laughs> the other day, I, again, I live in Las Vegas. I don't perform here much anymore, every once in a while, but I'm mostly West-based. And I was in Woodman's in Wisconsin buying some spotted cow. <laughs> yeah. So excited. And so this guy looks at my ID and he goes, oh, you're in Las Vegas, that's super cool. Like, I'm gonna be there with eight of my friends for a bachelor party. And I was like, oh, I have a treat for you. So I grabbed my purse, I grabbed my little business card, and I was like, when you're in town, Come to MarinaMars.com, there's a calendar, all the links to every single show, whether it's just walk-in, like, cash cover, or the link to, if there's, like, a pre-sale. You know how many people I've had come in off the streets randomly, and I leave my business cards everywhere? They go to my website, they come to the shows. Oh, and now, like, because they are, they look so excited, they come see me after the show, they talk to me, my producer sees that, so they see that I bring in the money, they book me more, they give me the headliner spots, I make a fuckload of money. Done. So just fucking do it. <laughs> and if you need help, I can do that service for you. <laughs> Alright, competition is not as great as compassion for your purpose. So, again, it's gonna be all heavy for shit for a second, but you're conduit for this special message that you have to share. What does this mean? So, I have this persona that is ridiculous and extravagant. That's the whole point of a persona. But me as a person, as a little tiny person, I'm like this all the time. I love you and I'm just, I don't want to offend you and I just, I just really want to live and I'm really happy and blah, blah, blah. But in order to achieve that, I gotta be a, I gotta be Marina Mars operating up here. Um, that being said, this isn't my ego, this is an act. This isn't real. This 
is not what I actually look like when I get out of bed, despite Beyonce's song, right? <laughs> um, I just know that at the end of the day, even if I'm not a headliner or not winning awards, it doesn't matter because when I hand that love letter out or my, my story or my act resonated with someone and they tell me, you know, something changed their life. For example, I had a, a student for a while who, she got pregnant and had a baby, hadn't seen her. It had been almost two years. And she finally came back and I was like, whoa, what happened? She's like, well, postpartum was super bad to the point where I couldn't do anything. Um, my therapist actually told me to come back to pole and she actually specifically took my burlesque class and uh, I just had this silly little exercise where instead of picking a fancy little part of your body, pick something a little bit more scoochy scoochy, a little bit just just like not as cool, like you know elbows aren't the coolest thing, but you can make them cool. That's the point of burlesque, right? So um, it was just a pick a body part, show it, do something silly, and run to the other side of the classroom, but by yourself. And she lifted her tummy for a second and went, <laughs> and, then she was like, and after class she was crying and she was like, I was like, girl, what's up? Like, did I hurt your feelings? I'm so sorry. She was like, no, uh, my own husband hasn't seen my belly since I gave birth. Mm -hmm. That's why I do what I do. It's not like this pump, this is an act. This parent costs too much money to do otherwise. This, the, these shoes, like, they hurt. I don't like wearing them that much. Thank you. <laughs> Because this world, this, you're going to get a lot of bullshit, you're going to get a lot of haters, you're going to get a lot of people who talk shit about you being an artist, and they don't matter. So, tell people how you will help them rather than who you are. Um, this is the way I write all my copy on my website, and like in my Instagram, my intro is when I'm in introducing very specific acts that have a message. Um, because if you wanted to know who I was, you could just Google me. I actually show up right away on the top because I pay for that. <laughs> um, yeah, get the website. But um, people don't give a shit like who you are if they don't know you, but they do care how you could potentially help them. So even if you're telling your own story, that's fine, but just make sure you remember that you are sharing something in order to make the world a little bit better or add production value. You know, when I, again, back when I went to San Francisco, I, I did a lot of research on every single show I applied for, and I gave a little blurb, maybe two to three sentences, and I was like, hey, hey I know that this is the vision for your show, here's how I fit into that vision. Um, I'm also flexible, point number five, and moldable if you need something specifically or you're looking for an act, or someone just dropped out that wanted to be, I don't know, a little mermaid, you need a little mermaid, I'll be your little fucking mermaid. Like, I will find a way to help you rather than be like, you should have me in your show because I am great, I am cute, I have these awards, I am perfect, la 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 la. Like, no one cares. No one cares. No one cares. People care about your attitude. So, again, I have to keep reiterating this. Focus on helping your audience instead of yourself. And I think the next point really illustrates that. Yes, this is where it gets a little controversial. And I stand by my opinions. <laughs> this is not a high school talent show for your friends to stand around and give you golf claps. If you legitimately want to have put your art form onto the stage rather than just a student showcase, student showcases literally are meant to like, yay, like do what you want. But what I'm saying is if you're getting paid to perform out in the world, this isn't about feeding your ego. Because I'm telling you that's very short-lived, it will not last very long. So let's just recap, we'll just put it all together really quick. Oh, why did I put these unfolding transitions? All right. <laughs> Get an education, pay your dues, don't be a piece of shit. Success <laughs> okay, is an awful barometer, focus on satisfaction. If you need help in that area, please see a therapist. And meditate, that works for me too. Stop hustling and start aligning. Put it in your mind exactly what you want to do before you do it. That way, it's that identity aspect won't be challenged. You'll be able to just be a sponge for that information and those opportunities. Gratitude is a key to abundance. Say please and thank you over and over and over again. And never forget where you came from. Be flexible. Oh, nope, just kidding. Be flexible. 
Shit's gonna happen, opportunities are gonna fall apart, and in that chaos is where the phoenix rises and all the cool shit happens. And to do the other stuff, le, le, le. you have to have good communication skills. If you don't, if you're writing is sloppy, if you can't spell things, if you don't know the difference between it's and it's, or they, 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 all that, double check yourself, you'll learn those things. Learn how to write in a way that will help you, help you get booked, make you look professional in an email, even Facebook too. Uh, if you want to be viewed as a professional, present yourself as one, whether it's in your writing, in your copy, the way you dress, the way you talk. Like I said, Rhea Mars, this is a persona. This ain't me all the time, she can tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very different creature outside of this because I'm not always working, but I'm working right now. And lastly, competition's great, it has its place, but when it comes to fueling your art, just remember what your purpose is and have compassion for that purpose, even if it is a rocky road, because that is what will keep you prolific. Competitions, guess what, if you won a medal last year, you're no longer the winner, because the winners are happening this weekend, right? <laughs> you give up your title because the next year replaces you, and that will always be the case. Talk to any burlesque legend in Las Vegas, they'll tell you, you just buy them a drink and they'll be like, these, these fucking people, they don't get it. <laughs> I say a competition, you gotta love. You just gotta love. <laughs> you just gotta love. <laughs> so, um, this was a lot, and I understand that some things might take a moment. I'm always available, I'm always responding to everyone in my DMs and in my email. Again, oh, you can't even see it, but marinemarks.com. Oh, sorry. <laughs> got a contact form in there, and uh, I am specifically very much more on Instagram than Facebook, but hit me up if you have any questions about anything. If it is more specific to do with like getting booked around the country, how to book tours, like all the stuff that has to do with performing professionally, let me know. I love helping people because people helped me. So, I love you guys. Thank you.